Speaking of my excellent opinions on media, can I, before we get to the proper politics, I mean, I guess it's all proper politics. I want to, I want to share a half cooked media opinion with you super quick. Have you guys seen the Twitter discourse about this? It's a, it's a, 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 a gender bendy manga with a, a, the punk girl and the Lolita boy. That's the boy and this is the girl. And the art is really cute, you know? And people were like, oh, but why aren't they lesbians? Why isn't it Yuri? And it got me thinking, people wanting it to be Yuri are boring. I do, I do think that Twitter lesbians are really annoying and should probably shut the f up just on account of them being annoying, not even because they're being problematic or whatever. That being said, uh, I, I have to say, I've always thought it really weird because like, okay, obviously there's a lot of pressure for women to come across as feminine. I'm not denying that at all. However, if you're a more butch or mask woman, there are a lot of people out there who are down for that, right? One of the most popular examples I can think of is Furiosa from Mad Max Fury Road. And I mean, people, people love Furiosa, right? Like now, obviously you have the right wing culture war backlash where, where they're like, oh, Furiosa's woke because she, she doesn't have hair or whatever. Like, okay, I'm not denying any of this. Okay. I'm not saying that it, it's not like a thing. Um, here, I'm trying to get like a good shot of her. There we go. Yeah. But like undeniably mask, uh, no getting around it. So and so forth. Um, e even has, uh, you know, now that I'm looking at the, at the, the art, like actually pretty broad shoulders too, you know? I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying the bit was committed to, and I respect it. I, I think she's beautiful. Uh, you know, pin, pin upon me the badge of the wokest man out there. Thank you. My taste is impeccable. So aside from the broader cultural pushback, there are a lot of people who are into that and God bless them. But if you are wearing a dress, you need to look exactly like a woman if you're not a woman you know what i mean like there's there's a lot of room for butch and mask women but if you're dressing femme and you're a guy god god forgive you if you uh if you have like stubble or uh, don't look exactly like a woman you know what i mean disagree muscular people in dress are hot okay let me dial this back a little bit because um I don't want to insult you. I don't want to insult you. I do want to insult you, but I won't, okay? So let's try this again. In broader cultural discourse, okay, if you have a character who is a male and dresses femme, 99.99999% .99 of the time, if they're meant to be taken seriously and sympathized with, they look exactly like a woman. Like... Like, to the point where, this is the entire trap terminology, where it's like the idea of they look so much like a woman that you think they are. Which, again, I'm not, you, I'm not recycling 2019 era trans discourse or whatever, you know, um, about how the term is problematic. I'm only saying that that's like, that's kind of where the archetype is from. You do not see shit like this, except the guy in the Lolita dress is broad-shouldered or has stubble or whatever, you know? And the thing is, you can be mask or butch as a woman relatively easily, but be looking like a woman as a guy, unless you're using estrogen. That's, you know, it's like the femboy death barrier of hitting 23 years old, where past a point you can't get away with just lasering your face every month, you know? Um, I mean, you can take estrogen, but then it's like, okay, so you can only wear a dress if you take estrogen? Come on. Crazy makeup skills needed. Yeah, I'm just saying, I, I wonder if there's ever going to be a little bit more, a little bit more room in the direction. Maybe preface the take with that, because I genuinely thought your opinion was that people in dresses need to look like women. Lily Krem, that's kind of really stupid of you, if you immediately thought that. you. I saw you question marking in chat four seconds after I gave my take. That was a very dumb and reductive immediate assumption on your part. That was a skill issue on you. I'm faultless. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll accept your apology in the mail. No, I don't, I, don't, I don't know. It's like, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with femme guys or, or dressing up like, you know, in a, in a cute dress or whatever. It's just always like the work you've got to put in to sell that. 
Because, folks, even in trans circles, if you've got stubble and you're wearing a dress, you get a lot of hate. And it's not fair. It's so much easier to be like a, a butch chick. You just have short hair and you look kind of tough. And you're, you're in the archetype. And there are people who are there for that. But, man, it's the expectation that you have to be flawless. I guess it's kind of furthered by the fact that in anime, everyone looks like a girl anyway. Wait, what did they say? What did the League of Legends player say? I called that one. I mean, I get it. Some people try so hard to look passing as possible so they get upset when someone has a different thing. Well, well I'm, I, I'm, yeah. There were a pro melee guy that's made like 25 accounts by now. Well, that kind of fits, right? If Whether you're a melee supporter or not, if you live in Argentina, statistically speaking, you don't have a job because of melee. So like, what else are they gonna do? <laughs> you know? Like, all right, okay. So what you're saying is men are discriminated against? I mean, I guess I'm more talking about assigned male at birth people than men because this hits trans women too, but in this specific regard, yeah? I mean, there's a reason why women can dress in basically all men's clothing and get away with it and be fine and no one really cares. Nowadays, I mean, nowadays women dress in pants, jeans, suits, whatever, and they're fine. Uh, but you really don't see a lot of guys, like masculine guys, walking around in, in dresses or tube tops or skirts. Uh, you know, there's there's a very different standard about the permissibility of, of leaning one way or the other, right? Where men's clothing becomes the practical default and women's clothing is purely ornamental and feminine. It actually, I mean, it traces back to like where the origins of the clothing come from because a lot of men's clothing is uh, like workwear or military derived. So it's like the practical clothing, the everyman's clothing, the clothing that's comfortable, the clothing that's easy, the clothing that's, you know, durable. And then a lot of women's clothing throughout history is just how do we make this shit look ornamental as f you know? How do we how do we like how do we make this frilly as shit because women are meant to be pretty and that's like the main thing they're meant to do. So there's like a kind of gatekept nature to feminine presentation, you know? You know what I'm talking about. Will the Korean gender war be covered today? If you keep bringing it up, then no. Sounds like misogyny? Well, yeah, it derives from that. You know, it's kind of complicated, man. People love to do the male versus female gender war shit, but basically anything that negatively affects women has to, in some way, negatively affect men. It's not like a purely... It's it's not like a, 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 a zero-sum game where there's like an extractive resource called happiness that one side mines from the other to take for their own or whatever. You know, it's a, the standards that, yeah, it's, it's just basic intersectionality, which people forget. Nobody likes intersectionality when it means that they have to be slightly more nuanced about gender takes, you know, because then that gets in the way of the man hate. I said it! I said it! I said it. There's a lot of so-called intersectional people out there that forget all about it when it comes to being reductive about men. Now, in fairness, a lot of men are terrible, and I acknowledge this, okay? You know, we're not, we don't need to ignore that real fact, that real and true, uh, politifact, verified fact, to make our points here. I'm just saying it's complicated, you know? But you're one of the good ones we understand. I didn't say I was one of the good ones. Don't put me in that Reddit box. Don't, don't have me out here at the, at the, the lefty convention. Oh, men are terrible, haha, <laughs> except for me. Oh, um, I, I apologize. Men are, men are, men are horrible. I'm so sorry to have to share a gender with them. Yeah, I get that Reddit shit out of here. Red flag to people with senses, by the way. Thinking about fruity masculine for the time 80s menswear. I mean, they weren't really considered as fruity back then. This is a little bit more over the top than you would probably see from the average guy, but at the very least, the average short inseam has definitely, uh, has definitely gone down. Everyone's insecure about their thighs now, so shorts all end, like, right above the knee, which is crazy. This is so hot. Um, I mean, it, it shows confidence. That's cool. Usually gay men, though. This? In the 80s? No, no, in the 80s it was more common. Short inseams were a lot shorter than they are now, you know? Are people insecure about their thighs? Well, I guess I should say men tend not to show off their thighs, you know? Also, people are a lot fatter now than they used to be, and whether or not you think that's good or bad or whatever, a lot of people are less confident about showing off their belly and thighs when they're fat, especially when they're guys. It's a, it's a lot of it's a fat distribution thing, because when we fetishize fat people in media, like, you know, fat bitches or whatever, it's always the big thighs and ass, but a lot of guys just get fat in their gut. You know what I mean? And that's not anywhere near as... There's a reason why you'll see a lot of fetish art of fat chicks with big thighs and ass and what have you, or like big tits. And then when you see fetish art of big guys, they're all really muscular bara types, where they're so muscular that the fat is like a layer on top, 
but the underlying strength of the body is evident. You don't really see a uh, fat guy fetish art where they're just like not muscular and they have a big gut. That's not really fetishized as much, you know, which is kind of unfair. And I would say that actually is like a kind of, uh, you know, that's definitely a double standard to men, you know, sexual desirability, blah, blah, blah. We've been there before. We don't need to repeat the classics, but it's unfortunate. Short men are also uh, rarely fetishized. Yeah, un unless they're in like a twinky, subby, little mouse boy kind of dynamic. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's rare, you know, mask short guys. I do see art like that, but it's not that common. I don't want to attack you. When I say you don't see art like that or something like I don't mean it literally doesn't exist. I mean, it's just not anywhere near as common. Guys have to be skinny to be hot. No, I disagree with that. I think that in a lot of cases, guys have to be built to be hot in most archetypes that people celebrate of men, you know? Not like ripped. It's not the abs, right? It's just like there has to... You know your fat distribution uh, gets shifted around a lot when you work out, right? This is the case for males and females. If you have saggy tits and you're a chick, having a developed pectoral plate can actually help quite a bit because you're, you're the, essentially the fat of your tits is hanging off of the muscle plate, right? So if you have a firmer muscle plate, you kind of like shape that up a little bit, you know? A little bit, not like a crazy amount, you know? Um, I get away with being overweight largely because I have a really big frame. So a lot of it just settles in a way that doesn't disrupt the broad shoulders and rib cage, you know, like I have broad shoulders. I don't work out, you know, like I haven't exercised in ages. It's just bone. But because I have a big frame, a lot of the fat just, bloop, you know, it just settles out in a way that's um, com com complies to or con conforms to the aesthetic standard. Oh, for sure, Mr. Genderlin. Yeah, I'm not making normative statements here. I'm only like describing what people tend to lean into or what people prefer. Vosh fitness era incoming. It's been coming for a long time. You know, it's it's something that it's it's something that I need to work on for sure. Mostly because it'd be a lot easier for me to wear high waisted pants if I lost some weight. Oh, any compliments for the shirt, by the way? It's just a nice, just a nice, mildly cropped. I love the collar. It has such a strong collar. I, re I really like it when a shirt has like a bit of rumpling right here because the collar is strong enough that it holds shape while around the, you know, just a little, just a little basic, nothing ostentatious, nothing ostentatious. The drip is 10 out of 10. Okay. You don't need to like suck my cock. The drip is not 10 out of 10. I'm wearing a, a heavyweight t-shirt and cotton shorts, you know, like let's not, let Let's let's dial it back a little bit. I know what I am, okay? I think I'm basically done getting basics. I think that if I'm getting any more shirts, they have to be a little more statement PC. The shoulder seam is strangely crisp. It does have a nice sharp angle to it. I like that. We need prints. It's really difficult to find high quality. Um, man, even stuff like this. Even stuff like this, it's really difficult to find these days. To find shorts with this inseam. Right here, okay. You see how this shirt kind of like curls up at this edge? Do you see how there's a curl up right here? That's because this shirt, unlike a lot of modern shirts, is pure cotton. He cut it himself. It gets this really like, in my opinion, pleasant classic little up curl um, that is, uh, you know, that it, that is a, a product of its make. And... Um, Oftentimes nowadays shirts, they have like the polyester blend or blah, blah, blah. My wife cuts crops like that and they curl modern shirts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, as long as it's made of cotton, it has to be good, solid, solid collar, you know. The green shorts are just average running shorts nowadays. Well, my main issue with getting tight shorts, which I would love to get tight shorts, okay? It's that, and I've said this before, and they hate me for saying it, but I'm not going to stop saying it because it's true and it's a real issue that I struggle with, okay? My dick is just too far forward, all right? It's not that my dick is big, it is, but that's not why. It's because as a consequence of the unique arrangement of my anatomy where my balls are a little more up, so my dick points more forward, if I wear anything that has like a tight, you know, a, a tight seam around the crotch area, it's just way too prominent, you know? Like, look at this shit right here. It's queen of the tuck. Look at this, look at this person on the right over here. I wish. You have any idea how uncomfortable it is to be wearing something where that shit be banging? I'm trying to like walk around, just wear tight underwear. I, I do need to get tight. Well, I need to get new underwear because unfortunately... 
MeUndies lower the quality of their new underwear. I have older pairs of MeUndies, like old, like five years old or whatever, that I haven't thrown out because, you know, you, I just have them like stuffed in the back. I don't like wear them, right? But it feels good. And I got some new pairs recently and uh, they pill. The pilling is crazy. I got like burgundy uh, trunks from them and I got little red cotton fluff balls all over all the clothing that I washed with them. I couldn't believe it. They were everywhere. So they lo like massively lower the quality. Pilling? When, when, what's pilling? When you get the like little prills, little little like dots of fabric that come off of it, they roll off of it. The little linty bits and they get everywhere. You need a pill shaver. I should not need to pill shave my underwear. <laughs> it's not a little bit. It's like a lot. They definitely lower the quality. What causes the pilling from a material perspective? Um, weaker fibers, right? The threads that they use to weave the cotton can vary in length and thickness, and the longer lengths of the fibers are considered the higher quality ones. So you would want shorter fibers to induce like texture, but you still want it in a strong weave. Underwear has a weak weave because you want it to, you know, stretch. You're not building jeans here, right? Um, so you want long fibers to give it a smooth, consistent, uh, like comfortable texture. But if you have like really weak or broken up fibers, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm guessing, I don't know the exact cause of the pilling there. It can be different things, but that would be my guess. Pilling is also caused by drying on too high a heat with synthetic fabric. Well, you should always like dry and wash on cold anyway. So, so now I have to find another place to buy my underwear. Can you dry clothes on cold? Well, drying on cold just means like 30 degrees Celsius or, um, like 80 five Fahrenheit, eight, 89, I don't know. Or you can air dry. Can we talk about politics now? This is politics. What about just drying outside? Yeah, you can air dry. You, should, you shouldn't need to air dry underwear though. That's insane, okay? You air dry things that are delicate that you don't want tumbling around or exposed to heat, but underwear is underwear. It's stretchy, it's light, it's loose. It should not be like, like, I, like that's crazy to me, you know? Like if, if your underwear is so delicate, it can't be and tumble dried on cold that's crazy genuinely what if you dry everything well then fine that's fine my boyfriend used to really like sheath have you tried them apparently they separate your dick and balls so that you don't get sweaty and chafed yeah i've, I've had underwear that has the like cup in the front um it's fine it does feel like i'm wearing fetish gear a little bit and it also makes the bulge problem worse yeah air drying is almost always better than tumble drying genuinely i i struggle to think of anything that tumble drying does better than air drying apart from speed and obviously it is much much faster i think that it with certain clothes tumble drying can get you like a nice kind of um beat up uh uh like crinkle to it right like if you're trying to soften it Oh, speaking of softening, never use fabric softener. Literally never do. I mean it like never under any circumstances, okay? Ever. Never use it. It's literally just bad for your clothing. Why? Because it do it builds up on the clothing and it um if you're using it on absorbent materials like towels, it builds up in the fibers and eventually makes them non-absorbent, therefore destroying the use of the of the towel. Um if you're using it on regular clothes, it can still pile up and give it this like over time this like disgusting waxy sheet. It's literally just bad. If you want to make your clothes softer use white vinegar you can use, yeah a white vinegar water solution that you can just dump on in there why does fabric softener even exist because they hate you and they want you dead it annihilates your washer and dryer with buildup yep aren't dryer sheets toxic dryer sheets aren't good either do you have an article on that i can send to someone whimsical you can literally google is fabric softener bad like it's it's not a secret or anything it's well known it's just something they do because they hate you and they want you to die you also use too much detergent. Just use a dryer ball. Dryer balls are better than dryer sheets, yeah. Dryer sheets are fine, this is dumb. You don't need to artificially add smells to your clothing. <laughs> There's no reason to, right? Like, you don't need to. If you want your clothing to not smell, wash them. Or use vinegar. It's for static? Then use a dryer ball. A dryer ball doesn't have any chemicals in it. It's literally just like a ball. Use a dryer ball. Some dryer sheets add weird-ass films to clothing. Yeah, 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 because it, it pulls off the stuff. What's a dryer ball? It's lit. It's you can you can just Google dryer ball. You can just Google. Don't some people just use tennis balls as dryer balls? Those should work just fine. I imagine those would work just fine. I don't know why they wouldn't. I love fashion talk. Let's talk laundry all day. I recently found a YouTube channel that talks about dry cleaning, and they had a segment where they talk about clothes that are um, poorly designed, like designer clothes that are really poorly designed and anti-consumer. And some of the shit I saw there, man, that's crazy. If as if I needed more reason to hate like Gucci or Versace or Balenciaga or whatever. Jesus Christ. Like stuff where it can't be cleaned at all. What's it called?
not plug in the channel. Dude, I, I don't remember. Okay, hold on. Let me find it, and then we can do politics. Okay. See, now the delay is your fault. Is it this one? Color cat. Clean Freaks on YouTube. Clean Freaks on YouTube. Oh, wait. The channel name is called The Clean Club.